driving down the road. I had my arm laid over on the window of my automobile. Next thing you know, the state police was pulling me over. They said, uh, we need to see see your hand. I said, well, I'm without one hand. I said, you know, I've got, I'm a little, little, little amputee. So I stuck my hand out like this. He said, put that gun down. I said, well, this is not a gun. Come up and inspect. I said, you can see, there's both hands. I can't do anything else. I said, what it is, it, it's the newest thing in prosthetic. This is an implant. They said, well, do us a favor. Just don't put your arm out the window until you get your prosthetic on there. So we got more things to do than keep pulling you over. <laughs> I used to be a salesman, and in 2005, I was diagnosed with having uh, cancer in my left forearm. It was so aggressive, it just wouldn't even slow down. So in 2008, they amputated my arm just above the elbow. I got a second chance of life. You don't think that doesn't make me happy and give me that much more of a drive? Yes, it does. Ready and go. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, and relax. Johnny Matheny has become something of a guinea pig for experimental prosthetics. Hand open. What he's testing here, here being the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory, is a glimpse into the future of how humans and machines interact. It's a mind-controlled arm that attaches directly to his skeleton, and it's the result of a decade of work and $120 million of military funding. So this is the first time that we're attaching a prosthetic device to an implant that protrudes out of his skin and allows the prosthesis to actually be physically attached to his skeleton. Okay, elbow extend, elbow in. I had a problem with all the arms that I was working with. I was having skin breakdown on my stump. With osteoigration, you don't have to worry about the suction on the stump. You connect directly to the implant, and so therefore the, you, know, you can continue wearing it you know, no matter what. Johnny's implant allows for more strength and mobility, but maybe more impressive is he can control the arm with his thoughts. For this, he had to undergo another surgery to rearrange the nerves from his missing arm. All right, so we'll just start with no movement. Ready? Let's pronate. Supinate, go. We are actually witnessing something that has never been done before, is Johnny really controlling that limb simply by thinking about it with normal intuitive thought. We are using wireless myobands to transmit that muscle activity. So now when he thinks of moving his missing limb, it now contracts those newly reinnervated muscles. Elbow flexion, ready and go. Hand open and go. Wrist rotate in and go. Ready and go. And go. And go. It's hard. I've done hundreds of thousands of hours of mental exercises, just trying to do the different grips, bends, rotations, points, pins. So anyone that, you know, right after the surgery, they think they can step right back into it and, you know, just start working it. I mean, you know, you're in for a rude awakening. It takes a lot of time. You wanna hand that to me? Getting Johnny to communicate with the arm is only half the challenge. The ultimate goal is for the arm to talk back to Johnny. Soon, he'll be able to feel how hard or soft something is to understand its texture and even its temperature. As he moves forward, Johnny represents a future where robotics goes from being a tool we use to actually becoming a part of us. I want the ultimate arm. I want it to be as near natural as a human arm as possible. You trust me? Yes. And shake me. How you doing? Good. Good to meet you. <laughs> I'm like the Model T of cars, or I'm the Wright Brothers of airplanes. You know, I'm the beginning. And as we progress, then you're going to see us finally move up to the Maseratis or the, these supersonic jets. So we're going to say, Back to the Future has begun.